The world is watching London this week, and so are we. I'm George Riley. This is Touchline. Yes, hello again and welcome to uh, Super League Touchline this week. Uh, we're in the capital at the Twickenham Stoop, no less. There's uh, a fair amount of sport actually going on in London. If you look hard enough, you'll find some. There's certainly some rugby league to look forward to this weekend. Uh, London Broncos looking for victory against Salford City Reds, who are having some season as well. All the build up on the way. We will catch up with a few of the Broncos. Plus, there's this lot. The Super League leaders come head-to-head -head with the national champions of touch rugby. Warrington's training takes a military twist. We take our usual look at the top five tries from last weekend. And plenty more from us here in the capital as we look ahead to the Broncos against the Reds. Now then, they're setting the pace at the top of Super League uh, after a string of uh, scintillating performances. But how are the Wigan Warriors at touch rugby? Well, we've invited um, Tom Brindan and, and, and Steve. They've come around with a couple of touch teams, and uh, I've always admired the game. It's been a great game for skills and speed and communication and timings of run. So it's been win-win for us. They come down, the lads have got a bit of a blowout, and they've learned something from it. So I, I love it. We'll be doing it again. There's no doubt about that. So you think that there's definitely things that are transferable from touch rugby league into into the Super League form? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean a lot of our errors come from catch pass errors and this. They the catch and pass the ball so many times in this. You know, it's uh, it's a great, great uh, education for us, lads. So if we can keep doing this when we're fatigued as well, that's it. It's, it's, it's superb. I'm really glad we've come down. I'm glad we've done it. All the lads have enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a shock to them how, uh, how fast and how quick they need to be. But we'll be doing it again. It's, it, this will definitely be hammered in, in pre-season. A lot of the time you've got to beat somebody one-on-one -on -one, um, without getting touched. You know, for someone to not lay a finger on you and, and get past them is pretty hard. So I think you know that, that's something that we'll certainly take out of it. And you can see some of the uh, the big lads, the likes of Jeff Loomer obviously played it before. Uh, yeah. Something that's really popular in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, it is. They, they play a lot more than I think. I wish Jeff worked that hard on the weekend when he played for us, actually. But yeah, he, uh, he loves all this because he's only doing it defending that. And just talk us through some of the technicalities of uh, sort of proper touch rugby league. Yeah, um, well, dummy half um, can't score. Um, and if he's touched, it's a, it's a turnover. That's one of the. the, the Big changes. The other one is there's no markers. Somebody's got to get back on side really quick. Um, the ball goes to ground. It's a turnover. And that, that's some of the main the main rules that uh, they, they're trying to, to adhere to here and, and play really play, play a really quick style of touch where they're, they're looking really hard and, and driving and, and getting them trying to catch them around the play of the ball really. Yeah, it's been really being a bit quicker and being I have to concentrate all the time and it's like everybody from back here get touch. You got to turn it over. So it's just being urgent and uh, starting to look around. Sean said try and getting it in with the Wigan juniors, it's something that can maybe build hand speed as well, something like that. Yeah, it's got all about everything in it really, hand speed, agility, so yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to get down. Yeah, I, I certainly enjoyed it, so we'll see how it goes on. So yeah, anywhere Eric can play, it's, it's really enjoyable. We'll play on Thursday nights, which is just a social atmosphere, and yeah, it's really enjoyable. Little kids play, and it's just a good sport to get involved in. I mean, there's a lot of players who have maybe got injured through the years and it, it can be open to them as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a big thing as well. Play, a couple of guys on Saturday um, either retiring from contact or picking up an injury that doesn't allow them to play contact anymore. Um, just finding, getting to touch and 
just play it, keep keep him playing rugby again. It's you know it's a good way to keep fit as well. I think it's it's a great sport that like you say everyone can get involved in. Yeah, some of the girls you know we weren't sure what what they'd be like, but uh, they showed a few of us up, so they give us a bit of a lesson on the wings. <laughs> and it, it really is open to sort of all ages as well. Yeah, it's great. I'd say anyone who gets the opportunity to have a go certainly should. It's it's good fun and it's, it keeps you fit as well as with a rugby ball in hand. Right, let's see some full contact stuff again now. And the top tries from round 22. His top five. So, number five this week, scored by the Leeds Rhinos at Wakefield. Stevie Ward with this break, the step, the pass, and Callum Watkins doesn't often get caught from there. Number four this week, this effort from Reese Williams for the Cast Tigers. Not many players make Sam Tompkins look silly. Williams managed it with that step and underneath the post. At number three, well, James Roby is having one of those seasons. A couple of loose tackles by the Giants and a great turn of pace from the England hooker. Second best this week, this from the Warrington Wolves. Westwood the offload, Ratchford the break, Myler the support, the step, and the peace of mind when he gets reeled in to send Ratchford over for the Wolves. Once again, though, pick of the bunch, Wigan Warriors, and heavily featuring Sam Tompkins. Farrell it is who scores it, but look how Wigan keep it alive. Tompkins there with a little Harlem Globetrotters shuffle pass, and then he pucks it up and goes. Dances away, plays the flat ball to Tucson. Farrell gets a bit of room and scores the week's top try. The Warrington Wolves are always keen to throw their considerable weight behind uh, the armed forces. They continue that this week as well by inviting the Army's rugby league team down to training. They got to run a few plays against us and a few sets, and it was good. Um, you know, what little we can do for these boys is um, uh, a pleasure, really. We've got so much respect and, and gratitude towards uh, the services, so yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Having the likes of Willie Poach and Carl Fitzpatrick uh, coaching the Army lads, you know, it brings their skill set uh, on fourfold. Yeah, I'm, I'm rugby league through and through. Um, uh, I'm an old lad, so it's not as good as if I was from Warrington, like, but yeah, really chuffed, and, and some of these boys are fantastic and they've been brilliant with us. Different, you know. So everyone had a spring in the step. It's great to meet new people, and we, you know we made ourselves uh, known to them. And it's just good to good to mix from people from other places and uh, other backgrounds and other, other jobs. So yeah, it was great. We all like the game of rugby, and uh, so that's why they're playing the, the proper sport, rugby league. And it's good to see. And uh, I'm sure uh, Moz is watching his back at the moment because uh, a few big lads in there, and I'm sure they want his shirt. <laughs> Yes, great stuff for, from Warrington and look out for that feature uh, in full on SLTV over the next few days. Well, back to life here at the Stoop and it's been, well, it's been a tough season, hasn't it? Let's be honest, uh, for the London Broncos, bottom of the pile uh, without a permanent coach and five defeats on the bounds. But they came close, didn't they, to extinguishing the Dragons' fire in Perpignan and that will give them enthusiasm and hope heading into this weekend's game against Salford. Well, if, if we play to our potential, if we play, to, if we play for 80 minutes, we, 
we, we can we can win the game. Um, you know, it's it's a, it's about doing it. It's not about talking about it. It's about doing it with actions. And um, if we do that, well, you know, I'm sure that uh, we've got a chance to win. You know, they, they've been performing pretty well this year. And uh, yeah, they lost Matty Smith, but they've still got you know decent players across across the board. And uh, you know, some of the results this year. I mean, the result up there against us shows just what they can do as a team. So you know, we've got to be on our best performance. Um, take a lot of the the um, you know, good things from the weekend against Catalans and just try to build on them for the, the game on Saturday. They're a good good team, Salford. It's, they're, they're a funny team at the same time, but like I said, they, they can, on their day, they can beat any team. They're, they're, they are a good team and um, we've got to be real good lot. And um, we know their forwards are good. We know their backs are pretty good too. So um, we've got to be on, on the ball, mate, to, to get a win over them. And in your last game in the south of France against Castellan, you put in a, a very, very good performance, by all accounts. Um, yeah, it was, it was OK, you know. Obviously, we got beat, so at the end of the day, it's, it's not coming close. It's, it's winning games, and we didn't win the game, so that's the way I look at it. So, um, you know, we, obviously, we, we did some good things during the game. But over the 80 minutes, we need to be better, and obviously, it's, we're on again this weekend. Mm, but it's encouraging, though. I believe you, you could have actually won that game. Yeah, it's, everything's in high sight, but at the end of the day, we didn't do it. You know, you, you, we made the mistakes that uh, didn't let us win the game, and uh, that's that's the story. So we need to make sure that we do the the little things right during the game, and um, you know, play to our plan and, and defend uh, like we know we can defend, and um, hopefully we'll go close. How you find the change from being out in the backs to being in the folds? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty tough, but. It's um, it's good at the same time. I've always wanted to play in the forwards. Uh, that was my choice to um, to move to loose forward there, and um, it is a big change. Like I've, obviously, I played for England there, and but like I said, it was my choice to play it loose, and then got to run it prop as well, which um, I weren't too keen on. But but no, it's um, it's been good. It's been a good transition for me. It took me a little while, but I'm getting there slowly. Are you doing anything different in training uh, over the last couple of weeks? Um, you know, we've, we've tinkered with a few things. Um, it hasn't been a drastic change because you can't really just come in and just change everything. It just doesn't work that way. Um, we've tinkered with a few things. Uh, obviously, we didn't come out that perform with the performance in the first week uh, with Tony as, as head coach. Um, you know, we, we improved from, from last week and hopefully we can improve this week. The season's been a disappointment for us as, as players, as, as coaches, as a club. Um, you know, so, so we've got to... You know, start to build on, on next year really with the, the final few games of the season and start to kick on for next year. So good luck to the Broncos and of course uh, to the Reds uh, for this one. Let's hope it's a good game uh, and enjoy your rugby league wherever you are this weekend and we'll see you next week.